Welcome to Building Fortunes Radio. Make sure you check us out at buildingfortunesradio.com. Along with our marketing partners, we're here to help our PM Marketing Network Lead customers build their businesses and make the world a better place. At Building Fortunes, we know how much your business means to you and the people important to you. So spread the word, tell a friend, join our newsletter, and go make a difference in your world. Now on to our show with your host, Peter Mingles. Hello, everyone. Peter Mingles here. You're listening to us on Building Fortunes Radio. It's www.buildingfortunesradio.com. And again, for those people that might be first-time listeners, my name is Peter Mingles. We started this platform a long time ago uh, to be able to actually host people that were those entrepreneurial people that are perhaps running home-based businesses or other entrepreneurs that you just need to know about. And today, we're starting our Pocket Change Fortunes radio show so we do building fortunes and this gal uh does pocket change fortunes and her name is jenny barnhart and i'll share with you i've met lots of people in my lifetime if you will but you don't meet very many people like jenny she is like one of those really super duper creative people that gets a whole bunch of stuff done she focuses on her niche market she's got an entrepreneurial brain i'm really not sure where she grabs that from she's got great ideas and implements them which is amazing and uh, just when we started to do some stuff with classified ads with her just today i went on to say who is this woman like what <laughs> who is this woman <laughs> I, we, gave, we gave her i gave her an assignment and i'm like oh my gosh who is this lady like it would have taken a team of people like forever to get this stuff done and she did it already so i just wanted to make sure that we had our first radio show on building fortunes radio and you get a chance to meet her now she focuses on a uh, uh, real estate, if you will. She's over in the state of Ohio, the 513 area code specifically, and we do a whole bunch of things. And I'm really looking forward to the things that we can build. So when I built Building Fortunes Radio, it was based on the premise that there's three types of people out there. There's your maintainers. They kind of keep things basically like status quo. There's your destroyers, and they know how to tear everything up. And then you have your builders. And your builders are the ones that make things happen and that's why we call it building fortunes you can almost see the verb in action and if you want to work with somebody who's an entrepreneur they can teach you a whole bunch of stuff while she's doing it you want to work with Jenny Barnhart so Jenny thanks for being here no it's great to be here now I'm I'm sincerely serious when I said my first reaction today when we looked at a classified ad website that we put together for you basically we gave you the the open frame and said go start to fill it in I was expecting a few things in there but like BAM I looked at it and said oh my gosh a lot of stuff and so well planned out I'm like oh my gosh and we were just kind of talking a little bit before the radio show got started and I wanted people to know a little bit about you so if you are in any area and you want to work with a great entrepreneur you want to work with Ginny now Ginny's first name is spelled G I N N I and last name is Barn Hart. I'm saying kind of like it sounds. Barn, like, you know, where mm-hmm. you put your farm animals. And Hart, as in H-A-R-T. Yep. So if you want to go find her on Building Fortunes Radio, you can. But also we're going to have a special segment for her under Pocket Change Fortunes. And we're going to talk a little bit about that as we go. But the first thing I wanted you to do for our listening audience is hear a little bit about who you are. So tell us a little bit about Jenny and wrap around whatever you want, to, family, business, all that sort of stuff, all in one. Okay. Um, thanks, Peter. Um, I am a product of an entrepreneur. Um, my mom is Filipina. She came over here um, about, oh, I don't want to age myself, uh, over 40 years ago, met my father. <laughs> um, he was, <laughs> he was on, in the Navy, so how that she just happened to be here, and they met, and boom, here I am. And um, she started um, her first business, which was a restaurant, when I was nine years old. And being the oldest and being from the Filipina culture, your first um, staff members are typically family members, which I think is not unlike America, but it's a little bit more um, a little more pronounced in the Asian culture. So I was at nine years old. I was their dishwasher. I was actually, you know, running the cash register sometimes, getting the odd looks from the adults. Because in my mind, I didn't realize I was only nine years old, right? I just thought, hey, I'm in the business, so I have to work it, work everything, anywhere there's a pocket, right, that needed to be filled. 
So Right, and, and um, we didn't worry about child labor laws because <laughs> it's right, nine right, right, probably right, wouldn't fit. I, I, tried, I tried to use that a few times because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I make it sound all glorious, but being a dishwasher in a restaurant at nine years old is not fun. <laughs> so, um, but you know what? It gave me a work ethic that like no other. Um, my mom is amazing, and um, she's 72 years old and still continues to work in her store. Um, she'll she'll chop meat on a bandsaw at that age, and I have a feeling that I may not be working in food industry, but I have a feeling I'll be doing the same thing when I um, get to that age. So, but yeah. So now I um, she just she really plugged that entrepreneurial spirit in my soul, and and I'm very passionate about it. And I'm just looking forward to, um, you know, moving forward in, you know, in any of the field. I just, I enjoy entrepreneurship. It doesn't matter what field it is. So. You know, there's a little life lesson in there that a lot of us forget, you know, maybe as we're growing up or maybe a little bit more Mm -hmm. spoiled. But when I was growing up too, my mom, we were one of five kids. We had a, 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 my sister was born in the middle and she was born mentally retarded so she had medical problems, and my dad was working a lot. He, I always remember my dad working two or three jobs. I don't ever remember my dad only working one job until he got way older. And then, uh, But I do remember what my mom used to do for us is we used to, you know, the boys, especially me, I was the oldest one as well, uh, washing the walls, doing the floors, cutting the grass. <laughs> I mean, I was, I was child labor. And I didn't really, you know, I, it was just what I did. My mom taught me how to paint stuff when I was young, and this is what we did, and we did spring cleaning and all those types of things. And I think there's a portion of that that's lost on these newer generations, and we're not doing them really a big favor. Like that work ethic that you started at nine might have, you know, Mm -hmm. we say stunk, but you, you learned the value of work. It was an obligation, if you will, but an unspoken obligation Mm -hmm. because she was your mom and you're working in the restaurant. You know, there were a whole bunch of rules that didn't need to be laid out. But the reality was, is that really was your, that really was your beginning of your work ethic for the rest of your life. And that's either a good thing or a bad thing. We sometimes say, you know, that was a really a great lesson. I wish I could break those habits, but I can't, you know, because you're always (laughs) doing stuff, you know, it's a cursing and a blessing Mm -hmm. all at the same time. But I I like to work with people that are builders. So, okay, so that's your Mm -hmm. kid, you know, the child labor thing going on. You know, you can't go back Mm -hmm. and sue your mom. You wouldn't sue your your mom. (laughs) So, so, so So then what happened? Like, okay, so then you're a teenager, and how did you get to where you are now? I know there's a lot of steps in between, but how did you get to where you are now? Right. Well, you know, the American dream at the time was to, graduate, go to school, find a job, work 40 hours a week, and retire and live off of your retirement. But um, that wasn't the case for me because I was not cut out for that. And I think that uh, by the time I was 18, I had already been working for nine years, right? So, um, you know, where people think that, hey, you're just a teenager, you shouldn't be thinking about branching out and becoming a business owner, but I've been, in, I was already a business owner for nine years. So that's all I knew. So what I did is I just worked different jobs thinking that that was the way it was supposed to be. So I, you know, I worked in a mail as a mail clerk. I worked as a office manager. I worked as a secretary, you know, learning every, you know, and I just kind of boiled down to into the college. I basically worked my way through with experience. And um, that's kind of how I got to where I was because I couldn't, you know, once I conquered a job, I kind of got bored and I probably drove my husband crazy because I didn't spend more than three months in one job because once I learned it, the passion went away and I was ready to learn something new. So um, the thing that changed my, the pivotal part was when I became a loan officer um, for mortgages um, because there was a start and a finish to each client. And that was the only thing that really kept me. And it also fed my entrepreneurial spirit, you know, because it was, you know, it was a form of building a business, but having the safety net of a corporation. So after a couple decades. And each and each one, each <laughs> one you know, I'm familiar with the loan business. So each client mm-hmm. brought their own set of challenges. So right. it wasn't like cookie cutter rubber stamping stuff. It was always a right. challenge. And yes. therefore, and that to. really probably kept your attention. 
Yes, it did. It did. And, you know, and, and the thing is, though, that really kind of made it harder for me as a as loan officer was still corporate. You know, it was still, like I said, you had a sense of owning a business, but you were still commissioned. So it's not like you had a, had a safety net of a salary. And, um, but you had that, but you also had corporate telling you how to do your business. And I saw how I could create and grow businesses, my business a different way. So that's where, fast forward, um, I um, got in contact with a real estate broker that was wanting some help growing his business. So I was able to take everything I learned in my, in my mortgage world and apply it to his real estate company. And that's really what really triggered my um, triggered everything that I am now is just um, all the all the uh, mistakes all the failures that I made um, from 2007 till today I've <laughs> been able to uh, finally um, turn them around to more successes which is really really inspiring for me right so let's talk about like where you are now so what is it that you do currently mm-hmm. Currently, I am the marketing and HR um, director for a real estate broker here locally. I take care of all of the agents' marketing needs. I also um, pro- provide services that um, that help them with their business and to grow their business. But also, I am the, um, a business developer, so I help create multiple streams of income for these ag- for the agents as well. Because everyone knows you're not you, you shouldn't have all your income coming from one stream. So um, what I do is I actually meet with agents that want to do more than just become be a real estate agent, and I help to um, pull their passion out and find out if there's a, a a stream of income that can come from their form from their passion, and then I try to merge it in with their real estate business. I love that because that's what builders do. So by my definition, when you're building something, you're doing those types of things. So like, okay, so where's your passion? Mm-hmm. Where does this fit? How does this work? And then you do more than you're just more than an ideas person you implement meaning you just don't talk yeah. about it this like if talk meant anything like everybody would be rich or lots of people would be rich it's <laughs> a matter of what you apply and what you actually get done so for instance mm-hmm. for those people that might be thinking about this if she were a McDonald's owner she would be teaching people how to buy or make their own straws or how to buy or make their own napkins, you know, how to buy or make their own tables or, or, or display bulletins or stuff like that. So you focus mostly on real estate. So um, talk to me about some of the things that you help your real estate entrepreneurs with. Well, one thing is the company that I work for, um, they are more, geared to the business owner agent. It's not like um, the bigger box um, nationally brown branded real estate companies where they kind of tell their agents how they need to market. Um, the broker that I work with is more interested in um, each agent having their individual um, piece or, or image within the company. So that's what I do is I try to help create their signature brand that has them so they can set themselves apart from other local agents. Because that's what you have to do. I mean, there's 6,000 agents in our market. So how do we make one agent stand out among all of those? So that's my that's where I bring in their passions. I bring in, you know, what can we do to create, you know, where they see um, when they see one icon, they know it's you. You know, and that's what I do is I help them create that. Excellent. Well, we're just about halfway through our radio show for the very first time. Uh, we're going to run a little commercial break. You're listening to Ginny Barnhart, and this is our new station. We call it Pocket Change Fortunes Radio, and here we go. I'll be right back. Thanks for listening to Building Fortunes Radio. If you sell a product or service, then you should check out PMMarketingNetworkLeads.com. Just visit www.NetworkLeads.com. For over 18 years, PM Marketing has helped distributors build their home-based businesses through lead generation, website development, automated email delivery systems, and sales training. If you're looking for a way to increase your skills and increase the number of people that see your product or opportunity, NetworkLeads.com can help. To learn more, visit www.NetworkLeads.com. Ask about their lead management system, capture pages, personalized websites, MLM training, humongous blogs, the humongous classified ad network, Building Fortunes Radio, or their webinar schedule. NetworkLeads.com can be your one-stop shop for everything you need. And now, back to our show. 
And we are back. Peter Mingles here with Jenny Barnhart. We're talking about Pocket Change Fortunes Radio. For those people listening in, this is our first radio show. You'll be able to pick this up on the previous radio shows that we've done. If you go to buildingfortunes.com and you look for Jenny Barnhart or you look for Pocket Change Fortunes Radio, you'll be able to find the segments over there and you'll be able to share them with your friends. And, Jenny, the thing that I love listening to you today on the radio show but also when we talk is uh, you're – Nice. I mean, you're, you're, you're I, you know, I say, you know, smart, working hard, ambitious, but also nice, very easy to talk to, you know, always very constructive, all of that sort of stuff on, on the business side. And I'm sure you like that a lot with your clients as well. That's why people like to work with you. Tell us a little bit more about you as a person. So I know that, you know, uh, you said you're married. I know Jeff. I don't talk to Jeff mm-hmm. too much because I'm usually talking to you. So tell us a little bit you about Ginny as a person. And the reason why I want you to do that is because there's a lot of our Building Fortunes radio listening audience in here that would love to be able to be the entrepreneur that you are. They just may not see where that fits. So what happens with you when you're not necessarily at work? Who are you? Well, it's kind of hard because I'm always going to be working. <laughs> but right? um, when I'm not working, I, you know, again, I am married. I have two daughters. Um, they're both adults um, and also now grandparents. So I have a grandson. Um, one thing that um, I did with my children, it kind of, you know, I'm kind of going away from the question a little bit, but I'll come right back to it is, you know, I told you my mom, she owns a, now instead of a restaurant, she owns a grocery store. So as soon as my kids turned 12, I gave them a three year break. Um, I made them work for my mom. <laughs> so, so we are basically a family of entrepreneurs. So when we're not working, believe it or not, we are um, still kind of working because we're always talking about the next, the next step. And, um, and, and I think that that's the difference is when you are passionate about what you do, then you never feel like you're working. And that's kind of the way I am. I'm always on. Um, and I think that that's what makes a difference because I always try to take an opportunity in any situation to turn it positive, either for me, um, you know, emotionally or, you know, financially or whatever it is. I just want to make sure that I'm always, you know, pulling an opportunity out of any situation. Right. So what so you're, you're doing, that, so. you're, you're basically, it's a lifestyle, if I can call it that. It's a mindset <clears throat> that you've developed over time. And you got your, mm-hmm. your the, the girls in and the family in it as well, but you're always looking at stuff on how you might be able to filter it or adapt it towards whatever you're working on for your advantage or learning experience. And I, I love that about that mindset. So yeah, I get it. It's always on. It's always moving. It's hard to shut off sometimes, but it really does mm-hmm. make you a wonderful entrepreneur because you can see <laughs> things that other people don't see from different areas. So it's kind of a really cool thing to kind of develop. So, so <laughs> you gave your kids a little bit of a break. They started off at twelve. <clears throat> how old is your How old is your grandbaby? He's two years. Well, he'll be two years old in December. Wow, so that is so cool. Very busy, very busy. But he's our. And he's actually our office manager. So oh, cool. <laughs> he comes into the office every day and makes sure that we're working hard and also serve. Um, we're also making sure that he's also making sure that we're meeting his needs. So, um, yeah, he's, he's quite the, um, he's quite the manager. I'll put it that way. So, so you, when you say he's like, he's always around you. So it's kind of always like the, you're working hard, but you're always around the family. So they always have that sense that you're around. Like your kids yeah, will never whole- really know what, what it's like to not have mom or grandma around. Right. When you walk into our office, You'll be greeted by my youngest daughter, and um, Jeff and I, we share an office. Can you believe that? We're married, and we share an office. Um, wow. And then um, our oldest daughter and her husband have the other office. They take care of all the graphic design and all the visual um, pieces of our company. So everyone has a place in this um, in this this office that we've created. So. Wow. Yeah, so we're always around, and we, we still love each other when we go home, which is really cool, um, because we also still live together, because, you know, why pay rent when our house can fit the family still, so, yeah, we're... <laughs> that makes so totally, much sense. Um, again, it's like, like I said, it's lifestyle, right? If you love what you're doing, it doesn't feel like work at all. Absolutely. Yeah, and you have something in common, and you're building towards a common goal, 
you know, when you're getting along and that sort of thing. I think that's like as, as good as it gets. And the other thing, too, is mm-hmm. you're in control mostly of your own destiny. So although that's you right. may not be able to control what goes on with the banking industry or who, what's going on with loans, <laughs> you guys will be able to move or shake or adjust. So in, in reference to the stuff that we're talking about right now, why was developing multiple streams of income important to you? Like you can make a lot of money, I'm guessing, as a loan officer uh, or as a, mm-hmm. a real estate broker. But why did you why did you find that teaching people how to generate multiple streams of income and that kind of a business was important? Well, I um, lived the high of the real estate and um, lending business, and I've also lived the the low. So I understand that um, there's cycles in anything. And sometimes when the cycles of lending and real estate are low, um, then you have other streams that could be that could replace the high. So my goal is to always have, you know, just so that we're always growing, we're always moving up, that um, when one is struggling, you have another income stream that you can work toward and keep yourself growing. You know, because I've I didn't do that at the beginning of our of our um, careers, and it was devastating. Uh, we lost a lot when the um, crash happened in in the 2006. I mean, that's where it started, and it, it kind of came to a head in 2008 and 9. But yeah, we felt the um, the loss, and I really don't want anyone to have to experience that. I mean, I think that it's you know it's something that's preventable. And if, had we been smarter at the time, we probably could have prevented it. So I'm hoping that um, if I can help other agents and other loan officers, other people in, in the sales position to create those multiple streams, then we can prevent some of the, the devastation that's felt, with, that's felt with those losses. Right. So let's use a specific – let's use like a specific example. Uh, one day mm-hmm. you had written to me and you said, hey, Peter, sorry, I was kind of busy doing a big job with the printing thing and right. I, you know, then when we spoke about you doing this big job with this printing thing, I found out that you do like you have your own separate printing division, if you will. Now it would make sense mm-hmm. that I'll let you finish my sentences, but it would make sense that real estate people probably need things printed, but you set it up so it can go beyond real estate. So if you're dealing with any kind of person that needs any kind of printing need, you would be able to develop that as well. So let's kind of explore that as a a specific example of what you did to kind of open yourself up to be still niche-oriented but expanding to be able to pick up an extra customer that might need your services that really likes what you do. Right. Um, I do know that in all business, um, printing is a, you know, you think it's going to go away, right, but it's not because people still like paper, <laughs> they still like the touch and feel. And um, I do notice that, um, you know, as I'm opening up the, um, the multiple streams for real estate, and I'm always letting them know, hey, I'll do your printing and I'll do your marketing, but if you know anyone that else that needs it, then, you know, let me know. I'm happy to help. And, you know, those are just little, I would just say it tongue-in-cheek when I'm meeting with everybody, but now it's starting to become, you know, they're realizing that, hey, I give a great product, um, it's quality, and it's affordable. And I think that when you're starting a business, those are all the elements you need. Um, and I think that that's going to be really the, um, the thing that keeps me busy because it's, a, <laughs> it's its own, own leg of the big dinosaur, you know. Right. Well, it just opens up another opportunity for you to be able to, I'm going to use the term, take advantage of the relationships that you work so hard to build. Mm -hmm. So for those people listening in, I mean, my philosophy has always been, especially as a business owner, that my business will thrive to the degree of entrepreneurs I surround myself with. So when you get those couple of extra entrepreneurs around you thinking the right way and they can focus, um, then you could really build great things. And we're kind of witnessing that right now for those people listening in. We started today. This is our very first radio show on Pocket Change Fortunes Radio. But Ginny and I met as a result of a referral uh, through a home-based business. We started talking. I showed her what we did. She says, you know, I've always kind of wanted to do something like that. And we kind of expanded to the classified ad site. 
Um, and then we started saying, you know what, let's use a big microphone like Building Fortunes Radio to be able to help get the word out, and I'll help you build it so you can build it to the extent that you'll be able to build it. And I always said, listen, I'm going to step out of your way because you're that entrepreneur that needs someone to step out of their way. I'll show you how to do it, but you're going to build it. Like you're really going to build it. So for those people listening in, and you're going to catch future Building Fortunes radio episodes with Ginny Barnhart, you'll be able to actually witness how it was done. So Ginny, we'll be able to have some examples, you know, as you're building it and the integration of how you're integrating this to what you're doing with the real estate market and what's happening in Ohio, which is where you are, but also nationwide and even with other customers. So I'm super excited about basically documenting uh, your level of entrepreneurial success with the products that you have and the products we can probably give you as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm really sincerely excited because who knows where this goes? Like who knows right. where this will go? So anyway, so, right. okay. So we have about a minute or so. I'll let you wrap it up. Why did you pick the name pocket change? Well, I thought of it, um, I, you know, when I was trying to think of a name, I was thinking, you know what? Most people have their goal and they have their focus. And um, sometimes it's not just pro- it, it. You, you make enough money to live, and you make enough money to keep whatever it is alive that you're trying to build. But sometimes you just need that that extra extra change to live life. And uh, because when you when you focus when you're only doing work and you're only you know providing for your needs, it makes life a little less enjoyable. So pocket change was you know if you start building other streams. It'll start off as pocket change, but if you work them right, then they can definitely grow into a fortune and might may even supersede what your your current focus is. So that's where pocket change um, fortunes came. Absolutely, I I love it. I love it. So the idea, especially like for instance, when I was younger and my kids were around, I always needed something to be able. Let's do something on the weekend or the extra movies. That extra hundred or two hundred bucks on the weekend really came in helpful for what I call like lifestyle. You know, if I wanted to do something, those those unnecessary expenses kind of took the friction off, if you know what, if I was able to handle that stuff. And then the idea of actually being able to generate something that's going to be able to produce a couple of hundred bucks or eventually a couple of thousand bucks extra per month, that was very appealing. And if you have a couple of those and you do it over time, there you go. You're going to have something big, and who knows what's going to take off. So I'm really super excited about this. You'll be able to hear Ginny again. It's Ginny Barnhart, B-A-R-N-H-A-R-T. Husband's Jeff. I'm sure he speaks. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah. we don't speak a lot. And I know he talks. I know he talks. But yeah. she, he usually he usually gives uh, Ginny the microphone, and we have a lot of fun with that. Uh, but we'll also bring uh, some other things to the table as well as we do Building Fortunes Radio. So, Ginny, I want to say thanks for being here on our very first radio show um, I'm looking forward to this. I love talking to you. It's so much fun. And it, and I'm I'm drawing more of the conclusions of, like, who is this lady? Oh, who is this woman? Like, I'm so impressed. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the relationship that we could build together as well. And we're going to catch everybody next time on Building Fortunes Radio. So go to buildingfortunesradio.com forward slash pocket change or pocket change fortunes. Both will work, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Jenny. We'll see you next week. Thank you. You've been listening to Building Fortunes Radio on buildingfortunesradio.com. Thanks for listening. Be sure to check us out every Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time for the designated Building Fortunes Radio segment with Peter Mingle. Be sure to check out the buildingfortunesradio.com website for our featured segments. It's been our privilege to have you listen in. At Building Fortunes Radio, we wish you the success you deserve and are willing to work for. So spread the word, tell a friend, join our newsletter, and go make a difference in your world. 